Welcome to Gig Masters, your channel for how to get and keep more gigs. On this episode of Gig Masters, we're going to talk about the top six guitar pick hacks. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, Mooney, not another guitar-centric episode. Yeah, one more. But I promise I'll do something different soon. Now, if you're coming back to the channel, thank you. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button, leave a comment below, and click the thumbs up. And uh, let's get right into it. Today's episode, the top six guitar pick hacks. Now, let's talk about picks. Picks, or plecterns, as they're commonly referred to as, have specific uses depending on what type of instrument you're playing and what playing technique you are using. For example, thicker picks are good for strumming. Medium picks are good for arpeggios, and thin picks are good for lead work, you know, um, quick melody playing on your guitar. And different materials have different sounds. For example, wood picks have a particular sound versus uh, uh, a plastic pick, and the different thicknesses of the plastic picks give different sounds as well. But today we're going to talk about, I mean, you should already know these fundamental things about the pick dynamics, but today we're going to talk about uh, hacks that you may not know about with respect to dropping a pick on a gig or not dropping a pick on a gig or preventing dropping a pick on a gig. So let's start out with number six, the credit card pick. I actually had to do this years ago on a gig. Got to a gig, didn't have any picks, and I had to run out to the car, and I used a knife, not like a pair of scissors like I'm showing you next door here. I had to use a knife and I had to cut out uh, a couple of guitar picks out of an old credit card. And uh, But today they make, uh, I mean, you can do that if you want to use scissors or a knife, but uh, today they make these little things you can buy online for 10 bucks that stamp out guitar picks out of old credit cards or or uh, gift cards or any little thin piece of plastic really but uh, it's not my favorite method uh, they can get kind of wonky and uh, I would only do it in uh, uh, the extreme uh, out of extreme necessity okay moving on number five the plastic dip. Now I'm showing you a can of uh, Plasti Dip next door. Um, this method I've seen people use where they dip the, uh, the, the the side of the pick where they're holding on to it in this plastic coating and it gives it this rubbery texture and it, it, it is grippy. I've actually felt one but uh, I've never tried this because it looks like it's messy and time consuming and it looks like it can get expensive. I don't know how much a can of that stuff is, but uh, it looks, not, you know, it's a hack, but I've never done it. Number four, double-sided tape. Or in this case, in this example, I'm showing you fashion tape. Uh, a lot of your girls will know what that is. And you can find this fashion tape at any drugstore. I know I got this one at Walgreens. They sell it at CVS, Walgreens, Walmart, pretty much any corner drugstore has fashion tape. And it's really convenient. Or you could just go to the hardware store and get double-sided tape. But uh, I find this uh, really quick and easy. But uh, I don't use this method because uh, as you can see, it's difficult to uh, rotate the pick once it sticks to your finger, it's great if you're going to play rhythm all night, but if you want to chalk up on your pick, so to speak, to play a lead guitar or, or get that chimey effect, uh, I like to spin my pick as well. I'll play sometimes on the rounder edge of the pick when I'm playing some rhythms if I want a softer tone, and then I'll switch it back to the pointy side of the pick when I'm doing arpeggios or lead work. And uh, I like to move around up and down on the pick, so to speak, and the tape kind of prevents that, so that's why it's not higher up on the list. So anyway, moving on. 
Number three. Number three on the list is sandpaper. Now you can use a piece of sandpaper to uh, reshape a pig uh, that's been worn down. You can use the sandpaper to add a rough surface to the grip edge of the pig. And uh, you can also use an emery board like I'm showing you next door here. You don't have to use sandpaper. And I, I use, I bring an emery board with me because sometimes I have to file down my nails uh, just before a gig. Anyway, I always have one. It's in my uh, accessories box that I carry on the gig. And now another method that I use is kind of along the same lines as sandpaper is I'll take a utility knife and cut little ridges. I've seen this method done before and I've used this method before. I'm not going to lie. Years ago when I was using uh, the slick plastic picks, they didn't have much texture on them. So I would use a knife to cut little ridges on them. Nowadays, they make picks that already come with this little texture. Number two. This is a guitar pick hack that a lot of guys don't think about. And it ties in with a previous episode of mine called The Gig Rug. Now, what it entails is, and I'm going to show you a side-by-side -side comparison here. If you're on a gig and the stage or the performance area flooring is dark in color and it's very dimly lit inside the venue, then you may want to consider using a contrasting color of pick. I know a lot of guys, they'll pick a color like their favorite color or their the color of their mother's eyes or their girlfriend's eyes or something, and they'll stay with that color their entire career. Guys, it is wise to bring different colored picks to the gig in case you drop a pick and you want to pick it up. Now, uh, that's the worst case scenario if you show up to the gig with one pick or one colored pick that contrasts with the floor, but I'm showing you right next door here in a dimly lit room on a dark surface, uh, you can't see the black pick. You, you just can't. You can see the white pick, but you can't see the black one. But if you bring your own gig rug and you use a contrasting color pick to your gig rug, well, you don't have anything to worry about. That solves that problem. Now, this leads us to our number one guitar pick hack. And guys, it is obviously the most uh, widely used hack. Some people wouldn't even call it a hack. But let me tell you, you're going to use this tip. Bring multiple guitar picks to the gig. Put some in your pocket. Put some on top of your guitar amp. Put one or two in the pick guard of your guitar if, you're, if you can. They even make microphone stand pick holders. They even make little holders that you can stick on to your guitar that will hold several guitar picks. But, I will tell you, the best thing to do is just to put a bunch of picks everywhere. Out of the thousands of gigs that I've played, I've probably dropped a pick 10 times my whole career while I'm on the gig. And nine of those times were between songs. I was reaching for something to drink or adjusting the microphone and I dropped my pick or I was trying to prevent the tip jar from getting knocked over by people dancing or uh, uh, many other things. But I can only remember dropping the pick one time while I was playing in thousands of gigs so it's for me it was it's just not that important i i generally show up to the gig with four picks in my pocket and occasionally i'll put a pick here if my the particular guitar that i'm using has a pick guard on it i'll put one in the pick guard dropping a pick is for a lot of guys not even an issue but for a lot of guys uh, it is an issue so i hope this tip 
or this series of tips, these hacks, I hope they have been helpful. And if you utilize these simple tips, uh, you'll find that uh, pick dropping is not an issue for you. Ladies and gentlemen, if this has been helpful, click up the likes, leave a comment below, and for crying out loud, please help me grow this channel and hit that subscribe button. Now, thank you again for watching this episode of Gig Masters, how to get and keep more gigs.